Oratrios, the city under siege, is now under siege from another force, this time more magical in nature. Our heroes have gotten themselves and Lena's family to safety, but now they need to deal with the magical terror in reality. Hopefully they can figure out something quickly or else Oratrios may be lost. The next morning after this horrible rip in the sky came, Catalina calls you to a meeting in the catacombs, figuring that it is the safest place. You guys are in a larger carved out room. It looks does not look original to the catacombs. It looks a little bit more well kept. There's a little bit less mildew and grime, but it is still dark and dank and not a fun place to be. But for Nostroy and Cormac, it is nice because you don't hear just the world literally yelling at you, screaming from this tear. So is it like, obviously, Sigurther can't hear this, but is it just screaming constantly? It's like the sun in Rick and Morty. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, it's good. big sun in Rick and Morty vibes. Yeah. The funny thing is, last time when when this all came, all went down, I found that meme and went to send it to you guys, and then I realized the next day I sent it to the completely wrong Discord server. <laughs> <laughs> so so that other Discord server just had no idea why I posted that. <laughs> That's the best way to do jokes, no context. <laughs> just here's a meme. <laughs> Cormac and Nostroy, I will also mention to you guys that you don't have any ill effects from this, but you notice you notice that your magic feels a little bit more disconnected from you than usual. Think of it as when you have a little bit of a cold and you suddenly notice, like, I I breathe a lot. It's hard to breathe, you know, like that kind of thing where it's like, it's not yeah. labored. You just notice your magical connection more like it's strained a little bit. Okay. I kind of like the idea that literally for no story, he's like, I feel sick. Great. <laughs> like, not bad, but, you know, just a little bit. Oh, yeah, I, I know. I'm my constant feeling of life. Having toddlers who just cough in my mouth constantly. So as you gather around there, you're seated, seated at a round table. Uh, the four of you are there, and Catalina. I think that's it. Uh, Adriana's also there. She's kept in the loop and things, and important. And I guess to keep up the ruse, so is Friar Lewis. Yeah, I mean, he's part of the team. He's a bro, yeah. Yeah, he also has, like, no power, because Catalina runs the Grave Diggers. He is just literally a figurehead. He needs to be informed, though. I think he is mostly there for appearance sake to not let Adriana know that you, that Catalina does not have magic to turn people into squid monsters. <laughs> but if you guys want him to have like a much more substantial role, feel free, you know, have more conversations with him. Have him usurp Catalina, have, install him as ruler of Oratrios, <laughs> giant squid man. Don't, don't tempt me, Zach. <laughs> I think Catalina would shank him pretty hard. <laughs> He's a seven-foot-tall squid monster. I thought he was eight-foot last time. <laughs> Between six and fifteen-foot-tall squid <laughs> monster. <laughs> That's the really alarming part about the curse, is that he changes heights, depending on what I remember. <laughs> so, I think we need to take care of this rip in the sky. Nostri, Cormac... You're, I guess, Sigrether as well. You use magic. Any ideas? I hope to stay in these catacombs forever because my head has finally stopped pounding. That's probably the alcohol. I can assure you it's not. It's the screaming. I would agree. I have both been hungover and also experienced this. This is worse, but well, it depends on the way that you are. It does not matter. The screaming is bad in the sky. B but, um, I think, you know, my solution it was to kill the guy, and we we did that. So, job done, I guess, except for the rip in the sky. I mean, that's the pretty big important part of the job not being done, honestly. Well, but he he was not the only one who was doing anything. Uh, Lena, by the way, is, like, hunched over whatever our equivalent of a cup of coffee is. She looks like she has not slept. We clearly saw there were a ton of other sorcerers around. I don't know if they are all from the Sorcerers of Porte or if they are uh, there's a small faction of them that have decided to do this. But he was not the only guy. 
Right. I mean, the sorcerers are fractured, aren't they? Are they? Do I know from my spies anything about the sorcerers of Porte? Mm, roll something. Okay. Or spend a hero point, I guess. I'll roll something. This would be wits, and it's not really a scholarship, but I don't know what else it would be. Notice? We'll do wits and notice. Yeah, that works. I guess you could make a case for theft. Like, you know, they're they're similar, like, skullduggery. Uh, whew, that's bad. <laughs> oh, wait, I did D6s. <laughs> that that, that will make it worse. Yeah. <laughs> three raises. Uh, ask three questions. Are the sorcerers of Porte, or like, how are they splintered? Like, along what lines? The lines that you have picked up from your spy network is that they are split in half between the old and the new sorcerers. So there is the old ruling class and the new upstarts that are coming in. Okay. Um, what are, what's like the percentage breakdown? Like, how big of a faction is the old guys? And how big of a faction is the new ones? I'm not saying it's not a good question, but I'm going to say what information you know. Okay. Like what you'd be able to find out. Okay. You don't know the answer to that. The sorcerers do not leave their tower often as far as you know. Okay. Um, Though the younger faction is out in the town. They are not in the tower. Okay. So like if, once you become a certain level, then you like move into the tower and that's like where you live? Um... Do you want that question? Do you want that to be question three or no? No, I was just trying to connect the dots. Sorry. Then I am not going to answer that. Okay. I don't actually have any better questions. That can be my question. <laughs> oh wait, I have one. Can, hang okay. What do you What do you guys think? Can we ask which faction it was that was responsible? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Is that what your question was, Mandy? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Tristan is very much part of the old guard. Hundred percent. Okay. Oh, I guessed wrong. So. Yeah, he is the old head of the Sorcerers of Porte, who is no longer the head for being very dead. Okay. Sick rhyme, dog. Thanks. I'm a poet, and I didn't even realize it. <laughs> <laughs> Got Mandy. <laughs> Got me, too. Uh, as I relay this information. So that's what Tolfer and Anya had to say about that. I think it sounds like we need to pay a visit to these sorcerers and... See, I'm guessing all the ones that were responsible to have fled the city, seeing as they said something about it being a ritual being wiped off the map. So maybe we can go visit the ones that are still here and see if they can piece together what has happened. True, if we can find one of the younger ones, that seems like it would be a good start. Maybe a good start would be the Lucky Shot Tavern, where they sell those magical teleporting beers. Sure. I guess they have to get delivered somehow. Unless they teleport them. Or make them there. Oh, you think they have a sorcerer in a house? I mean, I think it would be useful for making magic beers. Fair, I wasn't thinking along those lines, but it's a good place. I mean, there's got to be multiple of these young, younger sorcerers running around somewhere, so they got to congregate somewhere, and why not the tavern? Right, and somebody, the law on the totem pole would be uh, the one making beer at a place that could get hit by uh, siege fire. So, that makes sense. Well, and probably they might be able to, like, fix this guy if they don't didn't want it to be broken. And also, you know, it's kind of like a win-win because the old guy has probably got to die now, so, you know, it's going to kind of work out for the young ones. It's like, well, there is going to be promotion soon because... The old guy is they gotta go, so... I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me, so... You guys do that, or go work on that, and I'll work on them trying to calm everyone down so our entire rebellion doesn't flee the city, since we have the only doors out of the city that are not controlled by Senor Santiago and Fecalina. So, I do have a question on that. Oh... Has anyone noticed anything, not that I love the giant rip in reality above the city, but is it, like, is it hurting anyone? Like, is cattle death or, like, possessions? I haven't gone outside since last night. I've been doing triage down here. No, probably you shouldn't, you know, like, let's just, you just chill. 
We'll go outside and find out if you just, like, drop dead, you know? I mean, go for it, I guess, but try not to drop dead. I like all of you. Elena stands up and stretches. Well, I have a... I have our, our my morning meeting with my guards, so uh, meet in about an hour, and then we can head off. Oi... That's fine with me. I do have one more thing to think about amidst all of the other important things we have to think about. Um, Fick Cotalina approached me at the masquerade. I think she wants me to be a guard. And she knows where to find me. So if that, that seems like good spy work, just wanted to let you know ahead of time before... You think I'm turning traitor she, or something? Does she mean, like, bodyguard or city guard? Because those are very different things. I, Zach, I honestly don't remember. I th- I think she implied... Well, if there was an implication either, either way. She, from what I remember of the conversation, it sounded like she was being very cagey about that answer. I don't know. I, either seems useful in terms of espionage. Not to rain on that parade... Fake Catalina also definitely knew who I was, so that probably means she knows who you were, and she also does know who Magdalena is, so she probably knows who Secret Third is. So I think we're all basically made, is my point. To be fair, Cormac did just use his normal name last night. It's not the best disguise. Well, yeah, but I mean, I didn't and haven't since I've been in the city. And, uh, so she knew who I was, and I wasn't even doing fire magic, like, in her face, and I was wearing a mask. So, apparently, my public speaking precedes me. I wonder if she has something that can, like, see through disguises or something. Or maybe one of you is a rat. (laughs) Well, okay, but it actually might not be a bad idea if we put our- the double agent as Cormac. Like, if Cormac is acting as our double agent, being- Hired and working for us while feeding her potential fake information. I don't see that as a bad thing. Yeah, you could admit it, you know, just because she already knows. So it's like, yeah, you could be like, yes, I am here with Nyostra. I don't tell her about Catalina because she doesn't yet know that. You right. know, we'd have to come up for another reason right. why you be here. But yeah, I mean, that technically is true. You could be like, ah, you know, I came in to work with the Duke's Rebellion. They're crooks. They suck. They're being ruled by a horrible fish monster. Sorry, I love you, um, but... Well, hopefully, hopefully the theory of her being able to see through disguises is not true, because if that's the case, then she would definitely have seen Catalina. It'll be top of my list to find out. So that's actually an interesting point. I wonder if we could test that, like, nefarious, like, trickily, like, have one of us go in disguise and see if she instantly picks us out, you know? Right, I'm trying to figure out a way to do that with the bracelet without jeopardizing the, our possession of the bracelet. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, it's risky. But well, I, I guess if I we could try using my glamour that makes it so that I vanish into crowds, and if she's still able to pick me out of a crowd, then we know she has that ability. And that's only tilting the hand on your magic, which is not as specifically terrible. Right. And if it's better to know that she can find that out than to use it and have her make me, you know? The other thing, too, and uh, I believe this was told to me, if it's not, sorry, this is maybe a little bit metagamey, but, like, she looked happy when the sky got ripped open, right? Fake Alina did? Yes, yes, I, well, it was like a split second, but she looked very pleased. So here's what I'm wondering about, right? We have to, like, we can't kill everyone, you know? Like, there has to be someone we don't fight with. And it seems like her and Senor Santiago are maybe not best friends. So, like, you know, maybe we use, you know, one of them to fight the other. Maybe fake Catalina can be a friend. Who knows? You know, if she liked that the city was ripped open and, you know, demons are spilling out of a hell gate or whatever, probably not. But, you know, it's possible. Maybe the rip in the sky is a good thing and we should not have burnt that guy's face. I can't imagine that's the case, but, you know... Points for being an open mind. <laughs> I do not think it is either. 
All right, so you guys go your separate ways for an hour before you meet up. Is there anything, any scene anyone wants to have before you guys meet up to go investigate, or is it just narrative flavor? Mm, I assume that was when uh, Nostroy and I were going to do our thing. Cool. So, you guys go your separate directions. Lena has her meeting, checks in with the guards, calms them down, gives them new orders, all that. And then bumps into Nostroy on her way back to the catacombs. So I'm going to tweak that a little bit. Part of Lena's meeting with her guards is running them through training drills. So she starts running them through just kind of like the nor. I would say it's kind of like a, is it Tai Chi that has like, you know, like movements that you go through? Yeah, you're doing forms. Forms, yeah, doing doing forms, and uh, Cody did did we decide no- Neostray was gonna show up? Yeah, some- yeah, Neostray can just kind of like be there watching. So at one point, because I, I imagine this is kind of a place either right outside of the city or in the catacombs where it's like a pretty open area. So there's probably like a little bit of sparring because we don't have real guards that have been trained the way that Lena has been. She's kind of trying to take the ragtag group that we have and get us up to speed. And I think as she's kind of walking along the lines of her new guards, she uh, looks over at Nyostroy, who I guess is observing. Oh, he's looking for new performers. Yeah. New yeah, perf- yeah, 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 yeah. He needs, he needs people for the circus. He needs people that can put up a good show against Cormac, but ultimately lose. Also scary looking people. He needs ones that like have scars, big crazy scars, you know. Lena like looks over at him pointedly. I don't need you taking any of my men. Look, here is the thing. If they come and work for me in the evenings moonlighting, they will be more effective for you in the field. They will have a sense of gravitas when they fight. They will inspire the people around them. <laughs> Nothing says confidence booster by being beaten by Cormac every night like clockwork. <laughs> They'll be more motivated <laughs> to try real hard against other people. <laughs> uh, Lena, Lena like taps her foot uh, like she's thinking. Uh, and then she turns around and walks over to a an emptier space. You know, it sounds like there is a possibility we might be fighting some sorcerers. And she, like, has her, she takes out her sword and she taps the ground. Show me what you've got. I don't, well, we don't need to do that, you know, oh, I'm no. not. I have a little bit of. Competitive, you know, I'm not really into that, like, you know. You know, after last night, I think I have a little bit more in me. So show me what you've got, Nyozi. Nyozi, uh, looks kind of dejected and goes I mean uh, it's difficult because like the thing that I do you know it it just like hurts people basically just like 100% you know it's like not I can't you can't block fire with a sword but I think that using magic is cheating it is I cheat that's like my whole thing is I cheat and I have all of these wonderful men here who need to understand how to defeat cheaters uh <laughs> so what Nyostri wants to do is like make a really bright light right in front of her face and then throw a rock at her <laughs> now I don't know mechanically how to justify that but could I maybe say it's like an opposed like performance versus something else check and then that gives me an advantage on just like a throwing rock check or do you want me to roll a finesse to block it well i think because i'm not trying to hit you with the fire i'm trying to shock your eyes with the oh, fire I'm aware. i will say that you can do a panache aim roll and i'll give you an extra die for trying to blind her first okay because the damaging thing is throwing the rock <laughs> right which when i say a rock by the way i don't mean like a boulder like the is very weak oh no no like we're talking about like a very small pebble <laughs> Elena, how are you blocking? <laughs> or attempting to block, rather. Oh, I never upgraded my stupid sheet. I need to I do haven't that. either, so it's fair. <laughs> no, I know. I just, I had thought of things that I wanted to do, and then I never did it. Um, okay, so I believe this would be athletics. 
uh, and finesse. But uh, basically what I want to do is because I'm expecting something to be... I, I assume that magic users always go as direct as possible. Like, you know, especially I've seen Yostroy fight. I know that he like throws, he's not trying to be like, here's the fire over to the right. Now check out, it's on your left. Right. Boo. It feels like his attacks are a lot more direct. So I am trying to sidestep and do a swipe with my, my cutlass as more of a distraction. Cool. Roll them opposed. Okay. Pretty sure I already used athletics. Uh, it resets. It's a new day, so you're good. Oh, perfect. I'm real curious what's about to happen here. You can bully Nullstroy. <laughs> I'm trying to. <laughs> um. Okay, so that's two raises and a dice left over. I got four. Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so I think it's like he like makes that fire like pop in front of your face, you swing at it, and then he just throws a pebble at your head. So <laughs> you are completely right with Nelstra. He likes to go direct, he's blinding you, it's gonna go straight at you. You dodge out of the way. What you did not take into account is actually Nelstra's really weak and bad at throwing. <laughs> so you dodged right into the path of it. You're like, I got this. You swipe your sword, and then right between the eyes of the pebble hits you, you're like, ow. That's how I cheat, you know, like you expected the fire to be like the the thing that burns you, but then I can also throw little pebbles. But that's exactly why I need to teach all of them how to fight cheaters. And uh, Lena's going to... I'm trying to think how this would work. Because I basically want to do something similar and do like a a move that makes him look over there while getting like close to him with my sword or a dagger. It doesn't matter. I've got at least both, but I don't know how to describe that. I have an idea. Roll weaponry and wits. I, I have a good way to describe it if it works. Okay. Perfect. Um, I'm going to try and really make that work. Um, I'm going to use uh, my bonus. I'm going to use fencer. Uh, gain a bonus die when you use a weaponry risk. Um, and then I also believe I have an extra then for weaponry. Yeah. How are you trying to dodge out of the way, Nelstroy? Um, do I notice that she's rushing towards me? Yeah, well, you're fighting, so you, like, you're not caught unaware. I don't think you think she gave up after you hit her with one pebble. You've known her long enough to be like, that's probably gonna go on for a bit. Nelstroy's gonna try to do that really gross thing where you, uh, <laughs> are you, do you have a dagger, you said? Yes. He's gonna try to stab his hand through the dagger and catch your hand. <laughs> Got this really cool ability to heal myself. <laughs> I'm gonna say that's perform and panache, because he's kind of doing it yeah. to be dramatic. Yeah, you can have that. <laughs> Gosh dang it. <laughs> I don't mean to roll so good. <laughs> How many did you get, Mandy? I got four. I also got four. <laughs> So I think that we both win that one, right? <laughs> so I, what happens is Lena chucks her cutlass like to the side and you're like, what is she doing? And you like raise your hand as you look aside and all of a sudden there's a dagger in it and you're like, huh. <laughs> okay, so at this point we've got to be basically like face to face, right? Yeah, you're like, he's like, you're like not quite pinning in his hand. Well, I guess you're in the middle of the room. You have a dagger through his hand, you know, that's Maybe two feet apart. He's definitely, like, grabbing, you know, her her hand now. Like, he's intentionally, like, control the knife hand. <laughs> I'm saying because it's, it's tied. It's like, it's like not grabbing as much as you want. Like, you're slipping a little bit of your blood. Like, the fingers keep slipping down. And you're like, eh. Eh. <laughs> Don't make it weird. Don't make it weird. <laughs> I told you that I hate being the center of attention. Why did you do that last night? Uh... Yostroy, like, pulls you in a little bit closer and then catches his hand on fire. Uh, Lena is going to brute strength this. Because <laughs> she knows you're weak. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm going to use uh, brawn and could I argue weaponry? Because my my thought would be to use my, like the flat of my sword to push him down. Okay, yeah, I'll give you that. Or the knife. Or knife, yeah. 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 
like leveraging yeah. it, yeah, or twisting his arm in a certain way with the knife. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you weaponry. Okay, you're not just slugging him. Yeah, <laughs> you got four successes, Cody. <laughs> oh, uh, if you're gonna try to like wrestle it, like as soon as you start putting force on it, you know, just let go of the knife when he catches his hand on fire. He's just gonna like basically rip his hand off the knife and then heal his hand. <laughs> But you can uh, do your check and see if you just drop the knife, I guess, basically. Well, I rolled another four successes. Yeah, okay, then yeah. No, no straight just basically rips his hand off the knife uh. and starts healing his hand. Because, Magdalena, at some point you run out of the option to just hide in the shadows of your family. That's what I'm good at. I thought you would have at least understood. No, I don't. You have the name. You're in public. You can't just constantly lick your brother's boots because it's what your parents want you to do. Maybe I'm not trying to lick his boots. Maybe I'm trying to figure out how to do it sneaky. I don't think this is an option at this point. You know, like, he's... You have not stood up to him yet. Your family needs to learn a hard lesson about which sibling they can rely on, and it's not your useless brother. And how is what you did supposed to help me? You embarrassed me. I didn't embarrass you. You beat your brother in the fight. No, now... I am the embarrassment because I made him look bad. He should look bad. He's bad. Yeah, but that's not what my parents are going to think. That's not what he's going to think. That's not what the people around him are going to think. Are old, and you need to move past them. All right, they are soon to be dead. They are not going to live forever. They, They are old, and they are going to be succeeded by either you or your brother, and if you continually let him assert the fact that he's better than you, you'll be succeeded by your brother, and that will be disastrous. As this is going on, Lena is a, is not going to hit you, but is very much moving Nostra in a way that shows that she has control of this fight, but in a less precise way than she would usually. Lena's known for being a very precise fighter, but Nostra is getting enough under her skin that it's like, there's a little bit more anger, so things are a little bit more wild. So Nostra is a touch, like, usually she doesn't swing so wide. This might not be good, you know? It's definitely a little more brutish. Like, a lot. there's a lot more, like, mm-hmm. strength behind it, mm-hmm. but that means, like you said, less precise. And I think what Nostra is doing is basically cowarding out at every moment. Like, every time you swing at him, he either, like, tries to blind you and back up. He just runs away. He's, like, climbing up things. He's, like, tipping over buckets. Maybe you weren't who you said you were then. Because you clearly do not understand loyalty to family. No! You are suggesting that I just walk away. I'm not suggesting that you walk away. What I am suggesting is that your family is weak. And it is your responsibility. Don't call my family weak. They are! Your brother is useless and your parents follow a useless man. And it is your responsibility to be the strong one in your family. That is what it is to be noble. Lena it punches is him. ruling through strength. Lena punches him. <laughs> Yostre just takes it. <laughs> like, he, he cannot fight. <laughs> this is not what he does. Uh, is, is Lena punching him the end of the fight or is it... You're still gonna talk. Yeah, she she doesn't have anything else to say. She she like okay. I will describe that. Yeah, this is this is her not being able to say anymore. So Nostra like makes his point, trusting Lena to not like just stab him through. And you see her just she just drops her sword, fully punches you with a, a right hook that lays you out on the ground, and she just walks away. <laughs> Nostra. Um- just kind of, like, sits up, like, spits out blood, and then just goes, like, I get tired of teaching hard lessons. <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> lights his hand and puts it on his chest, and you see, like, the cut across his hand start to, like, shrivel shut, <laughs> and one of his teeth regrow. <laughs> he looks over at all the people fighting and goes, magic users cheat, just so you know, <laughs> and walks out. <laughs> You hear a guy, like, uh, one of the other people who's been doing well that's, like, helps Lena teach, and he, you hear him go, That's why you always stab twice. <laughs> <laughs> Jostre turns around and goes, Do you want to try to stab me twice? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> he just stares for a little bit, just, like, fire just kind of, like, bouncing around it, and then he turns and leaves. <laughs> so, after healing from the fight and... Lena getting some of her anger out. 
You all reconvene at your spot of meeting to head to the Lucky Shot Tavern. Yay. It's a ways from where you guys are stationed, but you have the catacombs, so you can be underground for most of it. Not too big of a deal. You get there pretty easily. Upon coming back in, it looks the same. You notice more... They're not cannonballs. Rocks, I guess, is what you use in trebuchets and siege equipment. You notice more rocks around in the neighborhood. There are big boulders, medium-sized boulders, (laughs) small-sized boulders. (laughs) Some boulders have moss. Some have, like, a nice, you know... You see, you you find the like the one who's hit the most taverns because there's a golden boulder there. You've got to be kidding me! <laughs> I'm making a joke like golden guns. If you pick up the boulder, is there a small like, is there like a small little wooden creature under one of the boulders? There is, and then then he says, "I can't find my friend. Can you please help me get to him? Look for where the smoke is. <laughs> Drop him in a fire." <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. Anyway, there's a lot more rubble around, but surprisingly enough, the Lucky Tavern looks no worse for wear, at least on the outside. Going inside, it is the same old tavern that you guys first entered. It looks drafty and leaky, and everyone... Well, it's middle... It's morning right now, isn't it? There's not really many people here. The people who are here are sad. Do any of them look particularly whimsical? Sorcery? Are you looking for sorcery? Yeah, like, does one of them have a big hat? Or, like, a, a <laughs> festive cloak? <laughs> Make me a notice check. Tell me about the length of all of their smoking pipes. <laughs> Do any of them have a cohort of small children with them? Maybe hobbits. <laughs> I'm not good at this. <laughs> You're the one that asked. Roll for check for hobbits. That's, uh, it's two successes. So are there two hobbits <laughs> with the old man? <laughs> So at first glance, you scan the room and you don't see anyone who looks like what you're thinking of. You very much have in your mind Tristan, who was in regalia, a giant powdered wig, looked annoying. Yeah, I hate him. (laughs) You wanted to punch him immediately. You scan the room and there's no one that you just want to punch immediately. And you're like, ah, he's not here. And then out of the corner of you are, uh, you notice someone slumped over a table, just completely gone. Like, snoring, and you're like, he looks, he looks like he's from Montaigne. He's got very fair skin compared to the other people around. And it's a, it's a guy? And is he asleep? He is snoring loudly next to a tankard. I don't want to be, like, bad, but do you guys just want to, like, take him? You could just, like, grab him, you know? Just drag him out in the alley? We can talk to him here, right? We could, but what if things get, um, heated? He winks. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, are you suggesting you're going to melt his face off? I'm not gonna melt I his face I suggest we don't do that. I'm not saying I'm going to melt his whole face off, but like... No, Stroy. <laughs> some of his skin, maybe, like a little, little burn, you know? No, let's talk to him here. Cormac six, sits down across from him. Just kind of shakes him awake. Oi! No, Go right no. there. Oh, uh, uh, hello? Yes? What the, What can I... Uh, can I go back to sleep, uh, please? N- no, I'm... Cormac? Okay, in that... In one second. Another round, please. As long as it's not the teleporting stuff. I mean, I'll take that too. If I can get me out of the city, and I'll, I'll do anything. Uh, what's your name? My, my name's Jean-Luc. Uh... Nice to meet you, John Luke. Uh, nice to meet you, Cormac. How, how are you? We're all going to die. Uh, you don't have to answer how you are. We're all dead, so it doesn't matter. We, we are like the step before in the coffin. Except we won't get coffins. I take it you're talking about the rift. No, I'm talking about the flowers outside. Yes, I'm talking about the rift. You, you see. He very- takes a long swig and he spits it out. Freaking water! Who gave me water? It throws it on the ground. <laughs> You seem very knowledgeable about the rift, more so than anyone else. Besides. I mean, yeah, I, I'm a sorcerer of Porte. Well, I guess you can't take that away. I can still do sorcery, sort of, but I can't get out of the city, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to be dead by that thing. I, I mean, sorcerer of Porte, you have lots of magic. I hear it was a sorcerer of Porte who started the whole thing, so anything. I mean, I don't have that kind of magic. If I did, I wouldn't be stuck here. 
in a tavern called the Lucky Shot in the worst part of town. And by worst, I don't mean like sketchiest. I mean like demolished. I used to live. I used to live in a big tower that's all white, and I had normal food, and I wasn't gonna die. And now here I am, stuck here where I was gonna die, and now there's a big hole in the sky, and I'm gonna die faster. Or why were you gonna die before the rift? Well, look at where we are in the town. <laughs> wait, 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 real quick. Nyostra just puts his hand on his head, lights his hand on fire, and slaps him in the back and heals him. <laughs> <laughs> that was very rude. <laughs> I'm sick of talking to a drunk guy. I'm sorry. It's just, I'm done. I'm done. No more drunk. <laughs> I don't like dealing with that while I am sober. Well, why don't you start with telling us what it is and how to stop it, huh? It's a giant rift sucking us into the neverwhere. I don't know what it's actually called. It has a name in the rule book. I don't remember the name. Do I need to heal you again? <laughs> no, it's going to stick us into the place between worlds that we use for our porte magic. Is it currently working or is it like stalled because the guy isn't doing anything? Someone like killed anymore? him. <laughs> wait, wh- wait, 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 what, 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 did, did you kill him? Is he dead? Oh, God. D- drink, drink faster, please. <laughs> you know, Stray just, like, knocks all the cups. <laughs> Anyone that brings cups, they're getting slapped. <laughs> that is not helping me. <laughs> Somebody burnt his face, stabbed him in the back, and cut off his hand. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, if that was you... Good job, he was a prick and I hated him. Second of all, could you have done it like five minutes earlier before the rift? I will say, I tried, and I got some very, like, heavy-handed nonverbal communication that I should not just out-and-out murder a guy in public in a party for saying something vaguely insulting to me. (laughs) That's a generally good principle, yes. I mean, I guess I can understand that. However, however... Okay, so this is bad. This is really bad. How? Uh, why? Why? I mean, yeah, we can see it's bad, but like. Okay, so why again? Is it currently like sucking us into whatever that is, or has it stalled? Okay, so so it is uncontrolled right now, and that is really bad. Like there is nothing to close it. So let me put it this way: crazy old man who's kind of mean can do fire stuff, right? Right. I thought that's what I felt on my back. Imagine if his magic, if you killed him while he was using it, made the fire that did not stop ever. That would be bad. That's yeah. what happened with that. <laughs> also, real quick, from uh, best, I was looking at the book and I see the walkway. That's what it is. I like Zach's name better. <laughs> well, because it's, it's all about door magic. I mean, maybe they opened a door to the Neverwhere. My, m- m- the Neverwhere is not my name. It's Neil Gaiman's name that <laughs> right. I aped off of a book. Which is why it's superior. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, because I think the from what I'm understanding in my quick skim is the walkway is the space between. Yeah. Uh, is like when you make the portal, it's the space that between where you are and what you portaled to. Right. You, you tunnel magic is what this is. Yeah. yeah. It's the tunnel. The wormhole. Yeah, that, however you want to describe it. The pencil that we puncture through the piece of paper. Right. So you are suffering from what I like to call a defeatist attitude. All about we can't, it's over, it's impossible. Let's focus on solutions. (laughs) That guy's dead, but there were like 50 guys. So maybe we need a different guy? Oh, okay, okay. Start from the beginning. Well, what beginning do you want? The beginning. I don't think you want the beginning. Where Why the- did he rip a big hole in the sky? Okay, so me and my friends, which they're all getting drunk other places, I would assume seeing this, thought it, uh, it was a bad idea to do this. I want to start out with saying. They thought, let's get rid of Oratrios so that we can pave the way for Montaigne to take over the country this area whatever you want to call this parcel of land i don't care we are you are a border town you're very important you have a good port or a good access to the sea perfect for what we want 
well, what they want, I guess. I don't really care anymore because we're all going to die. And they're like, well, if we just eat the entire city and siege with a giant hole in the sky, everybody wins. And by everybody, I mean them. Us. Start fresh. Got it. New clean slate. No annoying siege. No weird noble giving pigs out. All of the good things. I guess. No grave people extorting us to bury dead bodies. Right. I mean, have you looked around? This place does kind of suck now. I, I, I get it. Yeah, yeah, there's a big hell gate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sober for it. So, they didn't really like that we said that and kicked us out. And unfortunately messed with our magic a little bit. So they, like, depowered you? Well, I mean, I can still do stuff, but the problem is, the way my magic works is I have to mark something before I can teleport to it. Okay. That's how our magic works. We make blood marks, so then we can teleport the things or pull them to us, blah, blah, blah. However, I don't have anything marked outside of the city. Oh. Where did... Where were they marking to take our Atreus? Oh, they didn't, like, here's the fun fact. You don't have to mark anything. You just end up in hell forever. Well, until the hell monsters come and eat you. Oh, so instead of having a point A and a point B, they, they just, just said, had a point A and it'll get sucked into... Right, they just did point A, yeah. and we're going to send everything in there and have the horrible monsters in there eat everyone. Got it. So. So it sounds like you need to help us close this rift. I mean... Or you could just get me out to the city. No! But then you just leave, and we'd be stuck here. I mean, you can leave the city too, I'm not stopping you. But we don't want to get rid of it. <laughs> you're not going to let me go back to drinking, and you're not going to let me leave, are you? <laughs> nope! No, I think Oratros is worth saving! He looks around too. at this very sad-looking pub at not uh, at 10 a.m. in the morning. I'm not saying it's perfect! Yostroy pats his hand and goes, It's that I think you're worth punishing. <laughs> What for standing up for the right thing? I've already been punished for that. What? <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong. I said it was a bad idea to open a hell mouth and destroy the city. Did you stop them? I tried. I got kicked out. Did you continue trying to stop them? Did you warn me? Did you warn Fakalina? Did you warn anyone? Or did you just sit here and drink? We all have our coping mechanisms. <laughs> Your yours are bad, and you should be punished for them. <laughs> <laughs> Waking up sober people's mean. Or drunk people's mean. And sober. You're mean, man. I don't like you. <laughs> did did the sorcerers all just kind of get together and decide they were going to do this? Or did Monsieur Tristan come up to you and say, hey, this is what we are doing? There was a group me group meeting. We have, like, our, like, council chamber where we do this. And there's, like, the inner council decide, like, we should do this. And a lot of us were like, maybe not? That sounds bad. Why? What what was the reason given to do this? So that they could clear out the entire land, have it for Montaigne? They're no. just going to wipe it off the map, start over yeah. fresh with a new... Right, get rid of everything out of here, de get rid of all the messy politics, get rid of all the people... For Montaigne. And, and then Montaigne can come in with people and an army and take over the little bit of the border. And mm. they have a port, a nice spot for a port. Exactly. Like, I mean, it's a good town, like, there's fertile soil, like... Hellmouth not included, I guess, so I can see why people would like it. The scenery's nice outside. You have a nice anti-magic field out there in the ruins. That's gotta be useful Oh, you know something. about that. I mean, who doesn't? Been here for years. I'm, I, the drunk thing is a recent endeavor. <laughs> Wait, what day is it? Hey, can I ask you something? This might seem a little bit crazy. Hang on, no, I got a, it's a very real question. I promise it's gonna seem like it's not. How big of a thing can you move if you have a mark on it? What do you want me to move? I want you to move the ruins into the big rift and see if that, like, cancels it out. I mean, the good try, way too big. It's like, that is earth, not object. What if we, maybe one boulder? Like, one big boulder. Also, I don't know if my magic will work on that. Like, the ma anti-magic place probably canceled me teleporting it. Well, then maybe we need to find all of your friends. And get them together, and let's see if we can brainstorm how to get this solved. Okay, not a bad idea. I'm going to nix that, because I don't want to talk with 15 people when you're just going to talk to this guy. Oh, uh, I yeah, assume yeah, that would be fine, montaged, yeah. but... Okay, so, I, I might. there might be a way to fix it, but it's just... He looks at you guys... Uh, I mean, 
I, I like gambling as much as the next man, but this seems like too much. Oh no, you're going to die if you don't. Yeah, like you're not leaving the city. <laughs> you're you're here now. Can't I just get drunk in peace? No, no, I will continue healing you. But no, I have I have actually have like a, a geopolitical question for you, right? So you're are you Montanese? Montanese? Mon Montanian? Is he from Montaigne? I love Montanian. Montanish? Yes, that is where I'm I'm laughing only because I have no idea what the name would be. Well, didn't we say Montagues last time, or is that for the language? That's the language we said. Oh, Montagues. I believe we said that for the language. It could be the same. But we can say whatever. But you say you'd speak French and someone's from, and someone is French, you know. use (laughs) Montanian. Anyways. (laughs) Yeehaw! (laughs) So you're from Montaigne, right? Yes, I am. Though my accent keeps bouncing everywhere. It's being sober, messing with me. And so, like, is everyone from, like, Porte, like, they're all from Mon- Montaigne? Yes, it is a bloodline thing. Okay. Oh. Quite literally, actually, now that I think about it. Are you related to all the sorcerers of Porte? No, I mean, I mean, if you go back far enough, yes. <laughs> gross. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> gross. <laughs> Just gross. That's how genealogy... Fine. Anyways. So, okay. It inherited through the blood... That's fine. That just makes it the worst kind of magic imaginable. That's fine. So, okay. Why were you in this city to begin with? Like, why did you never... Why didn't you do this, like, 400 years ago? Because it's terrible and a bad idea. (laughs) Okay, like... Also, okay, I don't know all the geopolitical aspects, but probably because opening a hellmouth is not a good thing to do, and it will get everyone else in the world mad at us. Okay, okay, I see. I guess maybe Nostroy was asking, is there, like, a catalyst that happened recently that prompted Tristan to decide to do this well, foolish we're plan? Well, getting to that. Okay. So this is an involved thing. You can't, I can't just open a rift like this if I wanted to. Okay. Even if I got ten of my friends together. There is a specific ritual and a specific l- artifact that is holding it in place. Okay. If we get that, and we get an instruction booklet from the library, I know that does not sound very scientific, but I don't know how to reverse engineer this on my own. If we get both of those, and you get them to me, I could maybe close it. I mean, sure, why haven't you done that? (laughs) Oh, that's a good question. (laughs) Because he was drinking! That's why. Because I... I... Because I have to get back into the tower where they will kill me on sight to do this. And I just didn't want to die. I get it. Hiding is really hard. It's really difficult to sneak little sneak steps. I get it. You know, I'm also not good at hiding. I understand. Oh, yeah. Okay, fine. Like, you tell me, like, have fun figuring out how to get through their portal magic doors. Go for it, bucko. You're going to get us through their portal magic doors. I don't know how, that's why I didn't go back. Oh, okay, so you're useless. We'll probably we'll probably just kill you then, and we'll find someone who does know how to get through the doors. Oh, At least I won't have to go through Hellmouth. I hope, I hope the monsters eat you last, so you have to hear everyone scream. I was kind of, like, being facetious. Like, do you think you can figure out how to get through the door? I, I, I don't have a choice, I guess. Yes, I'll figure it out. Gosh, I'm really sorry. I'm twisting your arm to save your own life. Jeez. Yes, I can figure out the magic, I guess. Could someone else, if, like, let's say, like, could someone, if we got that instruction booklet and device to another person, could, like, any sorcerer of Porte do this? He looks at you very long. No. (laughs) Only me. (laughs) Cool, so, got it. Yeah, definitely, I believe that. 100%. 100%. (laughs) Only you, good. You're totally essential now, don't worry. I need to not be dead for this to work. (laughs) Well, I hope you like heist, Jean-Luc, because we're planning one. (laughs) Well, great. Also, probably you're going to have to, like, like forfeit any, like, loyalty to Montaigne that you have, because I don't think they're going to love that you saved the city they were trying to get rid of. I, I, I feel like I've already forfeited a lot, so... I think we should celebrate, though, this new alliance... Round of drinks on Mr. Cormac. Maybe you should drink some water. (laughs) Water's for everyone.
Hey Wanderers, thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Corsairs of Castile. This game is being run in the 7th C 2nd Edition system. If you want to hear more content from the Wandering Gamer Network, you can check us out at the Wandering Gamer Network website. We stream on Twitch with the username wandering underscore gamers, and you can follow us on Twitter at the WGN Podcast. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. All information about the music used can be found in the episode description. Until next time, wherever you wander, may you find your way home. <laughs>